believe that's the sound of paraly uh, pyrolysis. Pyr I forget how it's called. But we got a few leaks here and there. I might be able to remedy that in the future. Currently, let's see what we got here. We got 696 at the bottom. It's not showing too much on the outside. Of course, this thing's not, it's not insulated. This reads up to 700 degrees and you can see right there, I think. All I got is dashed lines there. So we're getting temperatures high enough to liberate wood gas from the system. And I didn't do a mud seal on that lid underneath that edge so we're losing some of our wood gas but yeah got to learn these things that's what these tests are for I don't know if you can hear that but it's clean burning you can see there's really no smoke to speak of that's all heat from the complete combustion of the wood gases coming out Okay, we got it skinned. I wound up using three pieces of corrugated roofing metal, uh, 32 inches from bottom to top. That was to cover the 32 inches of ceramic blanket insulation that's in there. And I went along and I had to overlap it. I tried to get the grooves to match up, but it, it wasn't going to work out that way, which is fine. I wound up putting screws into the ridges. I didn't want to go into the valleys because I'd wind up putting a screw into the drum, which we do not want. So at the laps, I put screws in the ridges. I went with three. It seems to be holding pretty good. Nothing's moving. It's uh, nice and tight. I used a uh, lightweight ratchet strap wrapped around. Of course, it was laying on its side on a work surface with the strap under it. I tightened it up, you know, squeezed it down, and uh, I would bump against the ridges to make sure everything was moving in a, in a way that it would let it tighten its, to its maximum. So that's what I did. Um, this is really not a how-to so much as a what I did and we'll see what happens. All right. That is wood gas burning down there. Woo. Gotta be careful not to get burnt. Standing atop my three foot ladder here to try and capture this. I've got, eh, you can't really see it too good because of the light, but there are flames shooting out the top of that that is a four foot long six inch one eighth thickness steel tubing i'm getting a few leaks around the top it's not too terribly bad um and if you're wondering why i've got clay piled up it's to seal the gap between the lid and the tube uh, it was just a little bit oversized maybe 
a 30 second oversize. So I can seal that gap by putting a uh, loose aggregate up there, um, you know, sandy loam, clay, and I'm piling it, I've piled it up on there to also add uh, to the insulating properties on the lid. And it seems to be working out really well. I took a measurement a minute ago right here at the stack yeah that's dash lines this reads up to 700 degrees Fahrenheit so anything above 700 degrees is uh, it's gonna show up as dashed lines now out here on the side uh, 98.6 degrees on the outside and right here at the fire pan 161 degrees by the way that's a that's a dump truck brake drum works great as a as a uh, firebox or pan or whatever you want to call it it's got a cast iron grade in it so it it holds everything, uh, holds the material that I'm using to, to start the burn. I don't know if you can hear it, because I'm using this Bluetooth headset, but this thing is puffing. It's just huffing and a puffing. Boop, 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 boop. Let's see if I can get you another shot of the gases burning. Oh, yeah. It's just a whipping it up in there. Changed mics. I'm using the microphone on the camera. I don't know if you can hear that or not. It's actually calmed down a little bit. Boop, 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 boop. Listen at that. Well, this thing picked up and it's just got mean. Got a little bit of a leak there. All I gotta do is go along and tap it. Oh man, listen at that. There we go. It's a slight, slight breeze today. Else. But that, man, I wish it was dark out here. I might have to do this in the dark next time. Okay, you can see the flames on this side. Look at that. Holy cow. <laughs> I've got some major pyrolysis going on here those flames are shooting out eh, two or three feet out of the stack right now that is awesome look at that there we go little wider angle shot there look at that oh my god that is awesome and all I've had to do is drop the occasional uh, piece of wood down in there to keep a flame going it looks like it's self-sustaining now because it's been a little while since I dropped a little old piece of wood in oh my god look how high that's going that is so awesome look at my fire breathing dragon oh my god I can't believe it this thing is crazy you can it's so bad now you can actually see the flames coming out of it and it's been going like this for uh, almost an hour right at it
Look at that. Puff the magic dragon. Live by the sea. Holy cow, this thing is rocking and rolling. Look at that. That is nuts. We've been, it's been doing that for a solid hour. A solid hour. That is nuts. Okay. I guess you can still hear that. Woo, damn, that's hot. Let's see. It's, uh, it's been an hour and Forty minutes, hour and forty minutes, and that thing is still self-sustained. There's still—I don't know if you can see that or not. You might can hear it. There's, it's still self-sustained. I haven't added any wood whatsoever in over an hour and forty minutes. So that is awesome. I'm telling you guys, get you some of that ceramic blanket. The roll I bought was, um, let's see, it was 24 inches wide by 25 feet long. And that was more than enough to do this one drum. I've still got enough left over to do a whole nother one if I wanted to. I can't believe how well this has worked out. If you don't insulate it, you're uh, not going to see the full potential. I never even got close to this before I insulated. So, insulation is key. I insulated the sides. And then I put the uh, clay loam on top. That helped insulate the top. At one point, right around the junction between the stack and the lid, there were flames shooting up. So I had to come back. I took my little hatchet and kind of beat, or not beat, kind of chopped up the large aggregate around it and that sealed that and shut it off so you can uh, you can use the clay loam aggregate not only as an insulator but also as a sealant provided that the gap between the lid and your stack isn't too big mine is only like it's less than a sixteenth so man this is awesome okay there you go. It's calmed down enough where I can get a shot. That's the wood gas coming in from the drum into the pipe. <coughs> Excuse me. Into the pipe and burning. Self-sustaining. Now this has been going on for, oh wow, uh, a good while. There you go. Look at that. All those gorgeous flames. I haven't, I didn't add any wood to this to keep a flame going for over an hour. And that's just the remnants of the wood gas that's left. I don't have to do anything. I'm just going to let it burn itself out and cool down and then I'll be checking to see how much charcoal we got out of this biochar charcoal retort. All right, pyrolysis is still in, uh, still going. You can see the wood gas flames down there. It's calmed down. 
quite a bit but we still got some heat generation down there I bet that's awesome uh whoo damn that's hot it's it's uh self-sustaining creating its own heat from the wood gas but it's on the downhill side now look at that those are holes that are drilled into the stack at the bottom and it's staying lit that is crazy look at that there's two rows of holes uh, roughly a quarter inch uh, six at the bottom most part and then six offset from there so a total of 12 holes so it gets uh, there's plenty of room for the gases to come through <laughs> 